The next parameter we have here is what we call the stroke volume. The stroke volume. All right. Uh, the stroke volume is measuring the amount of blood that is pumped by the left ventricle in one contraction. It's measuring what's the amount of blood that is pumped by the left ventricle in one contraction, what we call in one heartbeat. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? There is a lot of things I'm going to be explaining to you before we arrive at the left ventricle. But I want you to know the value of the left ventricle. As a matter of fact, almost all the organ systems have a direct connection to the left ventricle. Why? Because the left ventricle supplies oxygen-rich blood to every organ system of the body. It's carrying blood, it's carrying nutrients, it's carrying oxygen. All right? So, the stroke volume plays a very important role when it comes to the circulatory system. And so that is why the stroke studying and having an understanding of the stroke volume is key. It's very important. Okay. Now, having said this, what do we mean by stroke? Okay. Now, basically, uh, the heart has four chambers. The heart has four chambers. Okay, it has the upper chamber, it has the lower chamber. We have the right atrium, we have the, we have the right atrium, we have the uh, right ventricle, we have the left atrium, we have the left um, ventricle. Okay, now the upper chamber receives blood. It, the upper chamber receives blood. One is receiving oxygenated blood, one is receiving deoxygenated blood. That, uh, blood that doesn't carry oxygen. While the lower chamber is pumping out blood. My emphasis is on stroke volume. The idea is this, okay? I have mentioned that blood leaves the left ventricle and goes to the brain and to every other part of the body, as in tissues and organs and cells of the body, okay? The heart has pumps, okay? And these pumps are directly responsible for the circulation of oxygen and nutrients to the brain and to the rest part of the body. All right. Now, one thing I want you to know is that despite the fact that the heart has pump, doesn't mean that it is all the blood that enters the heart that goes out. For unhealthy hearts, it is just to thought that is required to leave the heart to the brain and to the rest part of the body just to thought that is required to leave the heart to the brain and to the rest part of the body. A situation whereby more than two thought is leaving the heart, then there is a problem. And a situation whereby less than two thought is leaving the heart, there is a problem. That is why we are studying the stroke volume. We want to study, want to analyze the volume of blood that leaves the heart. Is it more than required or is it less than required? If it is more than required, it means that the heart pump is working too hard, which can lead to heart damage. And if it is less than required, it means that there will be malnutrition somewhere or there will be insufficient oxygen somewhere. As a matter of fact, the left ventricle is key to the functionality of almost every organ. So if there's a, the left ventricle is, is a pump, okay? The, if there is a problem with the left ventricle, if there's a problem with the left ventricle, then it's going to directly affect the organ systems, okay? Because many of the organ systems are going to suffer because of lack of supply, all right? So having said that, let us focus on the word stroke. Before we continue, hear me out first. Hear me out. I believe you've been enjoying this video so far. Okay, then why don't you come for the full package? Our training is coming up very soon. In the month of May, 15th to 20th of May. You see, you have enough time to prepare for it. All right, come for our training where you are going to have access to the full package of the training on the quantum resonance magnetic analyzer, on the non-linear system analyzer. We're also going to be exposing you to learn how to interpret medical lab results. Medical lab results. Sometimes a patient brings the result from the lab and you don't know how to interpret it. 
we are bringing a medical lab scientist to come and teach you how to interpret medical lab results. We are also bringing in medical lab equipment to expose you to these machines. Machines like the ECG machine, that the electrocardiogram machine for the heart. We are also bringing in the microscope, the centrifuge machine, the sphygmanometer. We are going to teach you how to operate the sphygmanometer. We are also going to expose you to how to carry out your analysis and several other stuff. We are also bringing in a medical doctor that will teach us basics of human anatomy. We are bringing in a biochemist that will also help us understand our, bio our biochemical structure. Okay, because all of these are important in diagnosis and um, in treatment. Okay, and there are also other therapeutic equipment that we are going to be exposing you to practically. Like the meridian massager, we are going to bring an expert that will teach you how to operate the meridian massage. We are going to teach you how to operate the detox machine. And you will practically be exposed to operate the quantum resonance magnetic analyzer and the non-linear system analyzer. Even wet and dry, even wet and dry copying therapy, we are going to expose you to practical sessions with this equipment. All right, you can't afford to miss this training. Trust me. As a matter of fact, in our last training, majority of the people, over some five percent of the people that attended, were from outside Lagos. So you have enough time now to prepare your money if it's to book a hotel for one week to be a part of this training. Even if you feel you don't need the quantum analyzer or you don't use it, maybe you use the higher machine like the non system analyzer, the parameters inside the quantum analyzer will force you to learn a lot about the human anatomy. All right? And I have shared a lot about the human anatomy under these respective parameters. Okay? So you will need this knowledge. Come for this training. All you just need to do is to click the link you see in the comment section of this video and it will take you to a form where you're going to fill and once you fill this form, you are indicating that you want to participate in this program. Okay, it will help us plan for you. Alternatively, you can send me a WhatsApp message using the number that you can see on the screen. Trust me, you cannot afford to miss this training. Let's get back to class. The word stroke is borrowed from the ideology of a motorcycle or a bicycle. A motorcycle or a bicycle. As it rotates, as it moves, one cycle is a stroke. One cycle is a stroke. Okay? First stroke, second stroke, third stroke. Okay? So that is how the stroke volume is measuring the amount of blood that leaves the heart in one stroke, in one contraction, in one heartbeat. Boom. Boom. One stroke. Two strokes, three strokes, four strokes. Okay, so in each stroke that that uh, happens, in each stroke that happens, how much blood leaves the heart? Is it less or is it more? That is what this study is all about. And I will explain to you the implication later on. We are going to look at the result analysis to know what the normal range should be and what uh, abnormal results can cause what a normal range should be and the implications of having abnormal results. Alright, now let's go back to the anatomy of the circulatory system because we need this information because it's going to help us in our subsequent study of subsequent parameters like the left ventricular effective pump power, left ventricular ejection impedance, coronary artery, okay, vascular elasticity, coronary artery elasticity and so on. Okay, So follow me closely and I'm going to explain to you how the blood that enters the heart circulates all over the body. All right, the heart has four chambers: the right, the upper chamber, and the lower chamber. The upper chamber is made up of the right atrium and the left atrium, while the lower chamber is made up of the left ventricle and the right ventricle. Okay, so uh, how it happens is that let me put it this way. The oxygenated blood, that's blood that doesn't have oxygen, blood that has been exhausted of oxygen, comes from the trunk and also from the head and enters into the right atrium. 
Let me put it this way. This is where the heart is. I mean, so that you see it well, so I may go lower, so that you understand what I mean by lower. All right? This is where the heart is. We have the right atrium. We have the left atrium. That is the upper chamber. Then we have the, we have the right ventricle and we have the left ventricle. Okay, so deoxygenated blood, as in blood that, is, that doesn't have oxygen, is coming from the trunk and from the brain, from the head, and is entering into the right atrium. Take note, the right atrium is carrying, is receiving. So, in fact, the upper chamber, they are all doing receiving. Receiving of oxygen rich blood or receiving of deoxygenated blood. So, the right atrium is carrying oxygen low blood, that is deoxygenated blood. Okay, then it takes it to the uh, it takes it to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it now goes into the uh, right atrium. Okay, so the right atrium is carrying deoxygenated blood, that's um, blood that doesn't have oxygen. Then it takes it in, it enters through the tricuspid valve and enters into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it passes through the pulmonary valve and goes back to the lung. From the lungs, it receives oxygen and goes back into the, the left atrium. So the left atrium is receiving blood and this blood this time around is carrying oxygen. So this left atrium now passes through the mitral valve and goes into the left ventricle. Remember that is the left ventricle, that is where we are centering this talk on. It enters the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the main pump where we focus our interest on. That is the main chamber where we focus our interest on. Once it enters the um, left ventricle, it goes out to our body tissues and organs and cells through the aortic valve. Through the aortic valve, meaning that it goes from the left ventricle into the aorta. From the aorta, it now goes into the arteries that will carry the oxygen rich blood to the brain and to the rest part of the body. So I'm going to show you the image so that you will understand it better. Maybe what I'm showing you here, yeah, you are not getting it uh, properly. Okay, but by the time I'm showing you in the image, because it is an image, it is mirrored in the opposite direction. So. Um, what I mentioned, I mentioned that the right atrium is on this side, but you are going to see it uh, on the left side on the screen, but it's just like turning in the opposite direction for you to better understand. So don't get confused. Let's go and look at the screen so that you own this knowledge and it will help you to understand what happens when there's a malfunction of all this process. Okay, so um, we are looking at the heart chamber. We are looking at the heart chamber and we said that the heart has four chambers, all right? The right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, the left ventricle, all right? This is the upper chamber and this is the lower chamber. We are seeing these um, chambers divided into two, one carrying blue and the other one carrying um, um, red, all right? It is used, the blue color is used to depict um, blood that doesn't have oxygen in it blood that doesn't have oxygen in it, while the red color is depicting the blood that carries oxygen in it, all right? So this is, I'm, I'm going to still going to show you a better image, but this is the, this is the right atrium, sorry, this is the right atrium that um, it's coming from the trunk, coming from the trunk, from here uh, and from here, this is, uh, we'll call this the inferior vena cava, and this is the superior vena cava. They are carrying blood. This is coming from the body, that's from the trunk. This is coming from the head, okay? And it's, uh, it's carrying blood that doesn't have oxygen. Then there is a valve here. It now enters into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it now goes into the lungs. It goes into the lungs. There's a valve here. It goes into the lungs where it receives oxygen. From, as it receives oxygen, it now enters the, the left atrium, okay? From the left atrium, there's a mitral valve here, it now enters into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, there's another valve here called the aortic valve. That's how it enters into the aorta. From the aorta, it leads to the rest part of the body. Okay, so basically, the blue, the right atrium, the um, left ventricle, they are carrying deoxygenated blood. While the left atrium and the right ventricle, they are carrying oxygenated blood. 
Okay, let me explain it better with this image. Okay, so this is a trunk where oxygen low blood, deoxygenated blood is coming from, and also from the head. Okay, also from the head. All right, so the blood enters into the right atrium. This is the right atrium. This region is the right atrium. Okay, this is the right atrium. It also enters here into the right atrium, and this is the tricuspid the tricuspy valve through which it enters the left ventricle. Still, the oxygenated blood. Now, from the left ventricle, remember ventricles pump out um, atriums received. Okay, so the right ventricle pumps it into the pulmonary um, artery. So pulmonary artery takes it to the lungs. Once it gets to the lung, it receives oxygen. Then it enters. Then it enters the left atrium. It enters the left atrium, carrying oxygen in it. All right, from the left atrium, it enters the left ventricle. This receives. Uh, this receives atrium receives ventricles pumps out. Okay, so the left ventricle, which is our area of interest, the left ventricle is the main pump that connects to the organs of the body. All right, so this is carrying kind of oxygen rich blood and it's supposed to pump just to third if the heart chamber is working well, it's supposed to pump just to third of it in one heartbeat. Okay, so. Um, as it leaves the left ventricle, it goes into the, uh, this is the uh, aortic valve. From the aortic valve, it goes into the aorta. From the aorta, it goes to the brain and to the rest part of the body tissues, organs, and cells. All right, I believe this will help you understand better how the circulatory system flows, carrying oxygen and nutrients to different parts of the body. Okay, so now let's look at the result analysis. Looking at the normal range for stroke volume, the normal range is from 1.338 to 1.672. 1.338 to 1.672. Okay, thankfully this particular result is on normal, is within the normal range. But if the result is on, is on moderately abnormal high or severely abnormal high, it's implying that the heart pump is working too hard. It's implying that the heart pump is working too hard. Le like the left ventricle that we talked about, okay? So it's implying that it's working too hard and can lead to heart damage or even possibly stroke, okay? But if it is on, if it is on moderately abnormal low or severely abnormal low, it's showing that the body is not being properly supplied with blood. It means that the, um, the tissues, the organs, the cells are not being properly supplied with blood. It implies that less than two third of the volume of blood that is going out there, which is not enough and can lead to life threatening problems. Okay, when the body is not receiving sufficient oxygen, is not receiving um, sufficient nutrients, then there will be malfunctions. This is where you begin to have organ dysfunction, tissue dysfunction, inflammation here and there, and so on. So that is what we have for interpretation of the results. Now when it comes to lifestyle, I would recommend that you maintain a healthy diet that is low in cholesterol, low in saturated fat, low in salt, okay, because this will help to keep your blood pressure under normal control then be given to normal exercise regularly all right then eat smart take things supplements like garlic take supplements like coins and q10 they will help nourish or improve the stroke volume to be at optimum performance so that's what we have for stroke volume